Alright guys, welcome to the second part of my Omega 7 Hyper and Vega X review. Now I'm going to be testing out these rubbers on the table to see how they perform on various shots. Nigerian national team member and one of the coaches here at Triangle Table Tennis, Ojo Onolapo, is also here with me to help me test out the rubbers. Throughout the review, I'm using the Omega 7 Hyper on my forehand and the Vega X on my backhand. Starting with the forehand drive, you can instantly feel that this rubber is fast. I had to make a conscious effort to hit the ball lower to keep it on the table. Very similar to how it feels when you hit with a hard Chinese rubber for the first time. With that being said, the rubber also felt very stable and after getting used to it, I had no problem doing what I wanted to the ball. It really was an interesting experience playing with this rubber throughout the day, as while it is extremely fast and springy, it also has a very low and long trajectory, not unlike what you would see with some Chinese rubbers. And now I understand what Exium meant by hybrid rubber, as it's got that very fast sponge and grippy top sheet, but combined with a very low and long trajectory. Blocking on the forehand was also a struggle at first, as the rubber is extremely responsive, Again, meaning that I had to make a very conscious effort to keep the ball low on shots that I could land no problem with my usual setup. Once I was used to it, however, I was again able to place the ball how I wanted to, and the extra speed actually meant my blocks were slightly deeper and higher quality as well. Looping with this rubber is very demanding and this is definitely not a rubber for your average player. As with a lot of other very hard rubbers, you need an extremely fast action and lots of acceleration to play well. I definitely understand why Exium said this has Chinese playing characteristics, as when looping, it felt more like looping with Hurricane than looping with a rubber like Tenergy or Dignix. The trajectory felt very long but also very low, meaning the rubber was quite unforgiving. This rubber is indeed the fastest rubber I've ever played with, but it's definitely not the most effortless to loop with. I needed a much harder swing to land my loops with this rubber than I do using my usual setup. With that being said, the spin and pace I was able to get on the ball were tremendous. Once I figured out the timing for this rubber and really started to connect on my forehand loop, my shot quality went through the roof and the loops were much harder to block than the shots I produced with my normal paddle. Counter looping with Omega 7 Hyper felt very good. This was the one shot that did indeed feel quite effortless. With my naturally big swing when I'm further away from the table, the rubber generated a huge amount of power on its own, meaning my shot quality was very high and not so easy to deal with. The rubber definitely felt much more like a typical ESN or just your typical grippy, springy rubber than a Chinese rubber. Um, as I mentioned, the counter looping was very effortless and the shot quality I was able to reduce was very high without needing to actually force the ball over the net when I was swinging. Moving on to the backhand, the Vega X felt very stable. I play with quite a hard rubber on my backhand, I play with Riser Pro 50, so I had to get used to having a rubber with such a long dwell time in comparison, so my shots did initially go into the net. Once I was used to it, I could produce a high quality drive that was both low and deep on the table with no problem. The blocking with this rubber felt magnificent and it's where it really shined. The long dwell time gave me a lot of feeling, making even hard loops feel very effortless to block. The thing that shocked me the most about the Vega X was just how high a quality this rubber was. It felt like it could easily pass as one of your high-end tensor rubbers or even pass as like a Tenergy or a Dignix variant. It just felt so good to hit with in so many aspects as you'll see throughout the video. 
Um, the blocking felt stable, the looping felt stable, the driving felt stable, um, when I push it felt stable, just everything about this rubber is very stable, very spinny, and it produces very high quality shots without needing a whole bunch of effort with your swing. I really feel like Vega X is the type of rubber where your elite or your advanced players can use this rubber and say it's really good and say that they could play with it. And then also you could give this rubber to like a beginner or an intermediate level player and then they could also use this rubber. Backhand looping also felt very stable which is a common theme with this rubber. I was able to land a relatively high quality backhand loop with no problem every time I tried to and was also able to hit winners when I wanted to. It did feel a little soft for my liking at times, again because I was used to a very hard rubber on my backhand, but this is definitely a rubber I could see many players utilizing well on their backhand. The throw angle is indeed very high, and the ball does come quite deep onto the table. This rubber would be great for players that have a very arky loop, whereas the hyper with its flatter trajectory would be better for someone with a much more direct shot. After playing for a little bit, Ojo went ahead and tried the hyper on his forehand as well, and it had a similar effect for him. His loops were slightly deeper on the table, with a little more spin which made it harder for me to block, but the extra weight of the rubber sometimes meant his paddle wasn't where it needed to be on time. As Ojo has a professional swing speed, he had no problem with the unforgiving nature of the rubber, and after getting used to the weight, he could loop it with no problem. After hitting for a while, I then did some multi-ball against underspin on both the forehand and backhand, starting with the forehand, and again, the shot quality that this rubber can achieve when you actually connect is unbelievable, it's amazing. However, it is a very, very demanding rubber to loop with. I needed a full swing on my loop to properly engage with the sponge, and slow looping or half swinging was very, very difficult due to the trajectory the ball was taking off the paddle. The Vega X felt very good on the back end loop, and again, very stable. The long dwell time meant I could feel exactly what was going on with the ball, and my loop felt very under control. It almost felt like my back end loop couldn't miss with this rubber. The only problem was that while the trajectory is high, it's also quite short, so sometimes my loops would land a little shallow, especially compared with my usual back end rubber. That, combined with the fact that it is softer than what I'm used to, also meant that I would occasionally just dump the ball into the net, even though I thought I had the right contact. Unfortunately, I didn't record any footage of it, but throughout the day, I let a lot of people at the club try the Omega 7 Hyper and the Vega X. Most of the people thought that the Vega X was pretty insignificant, it just felt like your standard tensor rubber. Um, which I can understand, it's nothing too special, even if it is slightly newer technology, but everyone was pretty excited about the Omega 7 Hyper, and the opinion on it was pretty much split 50-50. Half, half of the people that tried it absolutely hated the rubber. They couldn't play with it, they said it generated no spin, the, the trajectory was too flat, and they were missing everything off the end, they just absolutely hated the rubber. But then there were other people, specifically the coaches, that really, really liked the rubber. Um, they were able to get a lot of spin, a lot of power, and their shots were very deep onto the table. In fact, one of the coaches that tried it immediately after trying the rubber decided to buy like four sheets of it right after playing with it. So the opinion on the rubber really was split, and I can understand why, as you need a very specific technique and a lot of acceleration to play with this rubber, but if you have that technique and good acceleration, then the rubber can be quite extraordinary in terms of shot quality. A little later in the day, I did some serve attack practice using the new rubbers with one of the top juniors at the club, Anav. Throughout the day, whenever someone wanted to try the Omega 7 Hyper, I told them that they would miss the first ball off the end of the table because of how fast the rubber is, and pretty much all of them, with a couple of exceptions, did and I managed to catch a knob doing it on camera, which is pretty funny. You're gonna miss so far off the edge, so fast. Yeah. Anav plays with a Chinese rubber on his forehand, and he was actually able to adjust to the hyper quite well after the first shot, producing very high quality loops. After we both looped for a bit, we did some serve attack practice and then some counter looping and called it a day.
Here's my final thoughts on the rubbers. Starting with the Hyper, I do think that it really is the world's first hybrid rubber, if you look at it solely in terms of how it plays. It definitely has some Chinese playing characteristics, especially when you start to look with it. Is it the fastest rubber ever? It might be, but its low and long throw angle means that it still requires a lot of effort and acceleration to loop with, and you have very little room for error. Go a little too far up, and it'll go three feet off the end of the table. Don't accelerate enough to engage with the sponge, and the rubber will feel as dead as a brick, dropping your loop right into the net. But if you connect and have the right technique to use the rubber, then the shot quality that it produces is almost unparalleled. I'm definitely looking forward to see how the 60 degree version of this rubber plays when it comes out in the future. One last thing I want to touch on is how this rubber compares to Omega 7 Tor, as on paper they seem very similar, both being a tensor rubber from the Omega 7 line with a 55 degree sponge. I've actually used Tor on my forehand before, and it's a much more typical ESN rubber in comparison to the Hyper. It has a normal sponge that isn't as dense, and is slightly more controlled and forgiving when you play with it, allowing for more slow, spinny loops than the Hyper does. Looking at the Vega X, this rubber feels like a jack-of-all-trades type of rubber. Every shot feels very controlled and very spinny. The trajectory is relatively deep and it has a very, very high throw angle over the net, which means you have a lot of safety when you're looping. If you blindfolded me and asked me what Vega X was, I could easily guess that it's some $60 high-end rubber, as at its price point, the performance it offers is extremely impressive. Vega X is definitely the type of rubber I'd recommend to intermediate level players learning to loop or to anyone who would want a little bit more arc or trajectory or even just safety in their shots. That's all I've got for this review, so thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow my socials. And if you want to buy a sheet of Vega X or Omega 7 Hyper, make sure to check out the link in my comment section down below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Adios.